Hi, this is Dr. Proactive Randy Gilbert, producer of InsideSuccessRadio.com, and I invite you to take a moment and listen to this powerful interview segment so you can be more proactive and successful. Let's return to the path to triumph with the Inside Success Show. Hey, welcome back to the Inside Success Show. This is Randy Gilbert, and we're back sharing Inside Success secrets, tips, and strategies with Sandy Brewer. She's the author of Pursuit of Light, an Extraordinary Journey. And uh, Sandy, what, what I would love, and I know that you've done some research, uh, you know, into the subject. Obviously, becoming quite an expert. Uh, are, is there uh, some kind of a percentage, maybe, of, of people that uh, do feel like they're victims of the past? Um, I think the thing about being a victim is not just connected to whether or not we're victims of our past, which we often are, but a lot of people continue being a victim of their now because of the way that they perceive a circumstance. They mm. are victimized by a bank clerk who doesn't wait on them or the person who's driving too slow in front of them. And I think that it's essential that we have this commitment. If we desire a life greater than our past, if we desire fulfillment and new adventures and to feel vibrant in life, that we have to commit to I am not a victim of the world around me. I just, I get to choose. I may have the right to say I'm a victim, but I need to exercise which rights are really going to be helpful to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really think that uh, the, the kind of thinking that helps us to be responsible for our own choices is, is really, really important. And, uh, and, and sometimes having a, a painful past uh, can, can really uh, be a, a negative and uh, share with us uh, your thoughts on, on, you know, about that. Does it have to limit a person? Well, I think it often does because when one has had a painful past, it's easy to view everything that's going on from the point of view of that pain. Mm. And so that individual will become oversensitive or over-emotional or over-aggressive uh, because they're viewing their current life based on the way they identified themselves from the past or based on unresolved emotions from the past that they're going to act out today. So I think that it really is essential to, for everyone to understand that what happened to them is certainly not their fault. But no matter how unfair it may sound, that what you do with what happened to to you is your responsibility. It may not be fair, but it is the only way that it's going to work. So we have to take these difficult circumstances and be able to look them square in the eye, to be able to feel emotions without getting into the story. Every child, there's not a child who has been abused, whether it's physically abused, emotionally abused, whatever, verbally abused, that that little child doesn't take it on as this is happening because something's wrong with me. It doesn't occur to a three-year-old that a thirty-year-old, thirty-year-old doesn't have their act together. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they just don't. Then we get to be thirty and we go, "Oops, didn't yeah. just happen like a miracle," you know. Mm-hmm. So, but at at three, the child doesn't know that. So at at three, the child starts to identify himself or herself as something that's not worthy, and then pain and suffering starts, and then the child starts to compensate for the places that they think that they're causing this other person to behave the way they are. If we don't make adjustments in the way that we identify ourselves, if, like you said in the first segment, we don't start to like ourselves and actually fall a little bit in love with ourselves, if we don't start to change our mind about who we are, then we will spend our whole lives trying to keep bitterness and pain and suffering at bay, and we never will be fully successful at it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, qu- quite the challenge, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. It is. And yet, I, I think the message that I want to give is it is quite the challenge. And what we're saying, uh, they're not really complex thoughts. So it's a simple thought, but it's not easy to do. It is really that willingness to say, 
Will I change my mind about how I see me? Forget about how you're seeing other people. How am I seeing me in context of the situation? Mm -hmm. In this moment, can I remember love? Can I remember caring just about me? In this moment, can I stay in charge of what I'm thinking of others instead of worrying about what they're thinking about me? In this moment, can I take responsibility not so much for what's happening, but for how I'm reacting to what's happening? Will I love myself enough? Hi, this is Dr. Proactive Randy Gilbert. Thank you for listening to InsideSuccessRadio.com. Now I want to invite you to listen to this entire interview for free. All you have to do to get VIP access is to type in the link as you see it below. In addition to this powerful interview, you'll be able to hear many other of your favorite celebrities such as Jack Canfield, Mark Victor Hansen, Robert Allen, Zig Ziglar, and dozens of others. Plus, there are thousands of dollars in valuable bonus gifts just waiting for you to redeem them.